as soon as we get to the right, because the exit's over there, go past the exit and get in line, the cops come rushing up on us. They're like, up against the wall, up against the wall. We're like, whoa, like SWAT, right? We're like, what the, the hell is going on? One thing leads to another where he's in so deep. And since he's a, a very intelligent guy, he becomes one of those leaders within the ranks. And ultimately, you know. Hi guys, welcome back to our channel. Today, we are gonna do a rare prison story video because we did not do one on our last live. So, and we promised you guys, so we'll do them in the future again. But in the meantime, I told Adam I would pick the prison story, which next time he'll pick one, but <clears throat> this story made us double over laughing every single time. Like I would just say one word in visit. We were talking about it right now. For some reason, it's not as funny anymore. Maybe because you've been home for so long. What do you think? Why do you think it's not as funny? I don't know. I don't know either. I don't even know what to name the story to tell you to say it. You want to just say it? Well, what made me think of this, or when you brought it up, I thought of we walk around the neighborhood here, and I am always, always cautious of keeping my eyes ahead and not looking in people's windows because you never know what you're going to see. And that's basically what this story is, right? So we'll call it Peeping Tom? That would make oh, me no, the you. Peeping Tom. Oh. Completely unintentional. We'll call it the Nipple Bandit. <laughs> so, so here's the story. Here's what happened. Well, first I should give you a little, let me give you a little background. One of the things that you do not do in prison is look in someone else's cell. What happens if you get caught doing that? The assumption is if you're looking in somebody else's cell, you're either trying to rob them, see what they have in there, uh, or you're perp. trying, yeah, or like, you know, you're a little, you're looking at somebody that you shouldn't be looking at. So, moral of the story is, keep your eyes ahead. And you got your peripheral, right? So like, if you're walking and you're gonna walk by somebody's cell, you're gonna see movement out of the corner of your eye. If you're looking for someone, you're just gonna know that they're there. So generally, if I'm walking laps around the tier, I'm just focused straight ahead, straight ahead, but you gotta be ready for like a door to open or somebody to pop out. So you're always hyper alert, but focused ahead. Pop out just because they're coming out of their cell or they're just Yeah, somebody comes you. out of their, no, somebody comes out of their cell too quick. Like you just gotta be cautious of everybody else, how they're moving. The cells in the cell block didn't really have these narrow windows. If you go to someone's cell and you're looking for them, you generally come right up, like you don't like peek around, like look and then look away. That's just creepy, right? So if I'm going to see like a buddy of mine, I'm downstairs on the first floor, I walk up to the top floor and he's in this cell. I get up to the cell and I just walk up and bing, bing. I'm at the door, I'm looking straight ahead, bing, bing. Quick question. Yes. Do you bing, bing because the cops do a different knock? Yeah, c cops don't knock. They just come and oh, bam, oh, okay. yank the door. So you're gonna knock to get that person's attention. You're looking right at them, right? That way there's nothing creepy. And listen, here's the other side of it. If you're in your cell and you don't want someone to see what you're doing, then you put a block up in the window. You put something there, you put a sign on your door like, hey man, I'm busy. And everybody respects that. This one day, I decide I, I'm gonna shoot upstairs. I need to go see this buddy of mine. He's a rough and tumble type guy. How do I even uh, describe him? He's a manly man, right? Hyper masculine, yeah, super macho. He's a good guy, right? A guy that I genuinely like. We didn't always see eye to eye on everything, but I like the guy, I respect the guy, right? So I go up there and <laughs> I'm walking up the stairs. I look up and I see, you know, cause before I'm gonna make the trip upstairs, I wanna make sure there's nothing in his window. Is he busy? Nah, he's not busy. So I walk up and I walk straight around to the cell and I go to knock and I'm looking directly ahead and I can't believe what I see. What'd you see? <laughs> Are you gonna demonstrate it? <laughs> no, there will be no demonstration. I'm merely gonna explain this. People must be thinking this is not safe for YouTube, but it is. So I look through this narrow window, um, like half knock and I'm like, Arr! but we meet eyes because there's a mirror on the wall. And this friend of mine is standing there in the mirror, no shirt on, <laughs> massaging both of his nipples, right? And I'm just kind of stuck like, wait, whoa. This is not the video to film outside. <laughs> so he looks, looks me dead in the eye, 
it just keeps going. <laughs> and I'm like, uh, okay. <laughs> <It's coming. laughs> and I'm like, where do we go from here, right? So I want to open the door and he's just like, nothing ever happened. I mean, at that point, what do you do? You know, like, you got to kind of play it off. What did you do, though? I was kind of stuck for a second. Oh, that makes it worse. Yeah, like, it's an awkward moment, right? But I'm like, why do you not put this sign up? I didn't want to see that. And it was indelibly etched into my brain. You know, believe me, anytime I ever went up there, it was like this, like, <laughs> knock on the door. Like, I didn't want to see. I'm like, dude, what are you doing? <laughs> so anyways, he later explains to me because of the steroids and everything else he's like you know i gotta massage him out which makes perfect sense at this point right but it's still it's not something that you don't want to walk up on somebody and, and and see that i mean there's just plenty too many things you know that a guy needs his own time space to do put the damn block up moral of the story put the damn block up put the damn block up what are the odds on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the most likely, 1 being the least, that he was massaging his gyno? Which sounds really dirty, but that he was actually massaging that out. Um, Truth. Yeah. I, Zero? I, I, I don't know. You know, hey, whatever, man. If that's your thing, that's, that's all good, right? Mm -hmm. Just put the damn block up. Yeah, for the longest time, after I told her the story, just because it was one of those funny things. Just can't get it out of my head. And then you gotta see, you know, this guy all the time. But, well, I will say this, being in prison, especially where, listen, you're strip searched, depending on where you are, sometimes multiple times a day. I'll give you another good story. It was me, Rob, and Bobby. This is back in Allenwood, this is way back. This is in the pen. The three of us, three white guys, go to dinner, right? We go to dinner, cruise into the chow hall. Now the whites and the Hispanics all go through the left side of the line. The blacks go through the right. Well, we roll in and for whatever reason that night, like just the way that the units had been called, there's like 20 people, 20 black guys in the black line. Like there's no line. Okay. And the line for the whites is like 100 deep all the way out the door. Wow. Yeah, it's all the way to the door. And we're like, let's go to the other side. It's the three of us, right? The three of us together. We're just going over there not to sit down and eat, just to grab. Like, there's lines that go through and you go through and you get your tray and you get your stuff. We're still going to go over here and, and sit and eat where we always eat. We're just picking up the food. As soon as we get to the right, because the exit's over there, go past the exit and get in line, the cops come rushing up on us. They're like, up against the wall, up against the wall. We're like, whoa, like SWAT, right? We're like, what the, what the hell is going on? They're like, turn around, turn around, come with us, stay on the wall. So everybody freezes in the chow hall. They walk us out the exit, take us down the hallway, bring us over to the officer's mess, which is closed. There's nobody in there at this time. Just start stripping us out there, like get naked. Like serious, serious search, right? Like bend over, squat, cough, like. We're like, yo, what's up? Like they go through all of our clothes, like fine tooth, you know, like, what's up, man? And the uh, lieutenant comes over, he's like, he's like, what are you guys doing going over on the other side? We're like, we were hungry, man. We didn't want to, we didn't want to wait in line. We just went over there, the three of us, you know, went to grab our trays. He's like, why are you on that side? You're not supposed to be over on that side. We're like, man, because there was nobody in line. They're like, well, you guys end up, you know, you guys go over there. We thought something was getting ready to jump off. They immediately, just that quick for us getting in that line. We didn't even like get near the serving line. They had us up in the hall, escorted out, strip searched. Yep. So all of the you know, segregation and then those things that take place in prison, they are so common. Like, it's just such an accepted way of life. Just trying to get a tray, we wound up naked, you know, squat and cough as a result. Oof. Good times. Kind of reminds me of that movie the other night. Good times. Yeah. I will say this. Watching that movie the other night was like, 
disturbing. Why don't you say what, what's for me too? Why don't you give a background on what movie it was? Well, on Easter, we met up with some friends in the park to have Easter dinner, just hang out, spend some time together. And I'm not sure who brought it up. Someone, someone that had not been incarcerated. And they're like, hey man, this, this was a really good movie. I'd be interested to hear what you, what you think of it. And was it that night that we came home and watched it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That same night. It's called Shot Caller. About a guy that ends up in prison. You know, DWI. Guy was a business guy. DWI uh, becomes a vehicular manslaughter. You know, best friend dies, winds up in prison. Blah, blah, blah. You know, gets tipped up, joins a gang. He's out in Cali. And it's just like one thing leads to another where he's in so deep. And since he's a, a very intelligent guy, um, he becomes one of those leaders within the ranks. And ultimately, you know, just, it's about that journey, that experience, and, and even him getting out, but not getting free of, you know, what started in prison. And it was just, man, it was, it was all too real. I know far too many individuals who, you know, their stories are very similar to that or some variation of it you know maybe they didn't have that clean cut life in the beginning um, but maybe that's what they wanted can't tell you how many how many men I spoke to over the years who expressed in private you know their regret about um, joining up and you know being obligated to certain things and feeling like there there was no way out for them some guys get out you know some are fortunate enough uh, you know but it was just it was a reminder of that and it was all too real and and for me it was you know a reminder of how fortunate I was and to be honest, I mean, there were plenty of situations that I was in. And maybe that's why I don't like to tell the prison stories. Yeah. You know, because for those that have been there, like, there's nothing to glamorize. Like, I'm just grateful to be here. Yeah. Because things could have gone very differently. There were so many times where, you know, I mean, things that were beyond my personal control that if, if it would have kicked off or gone differently than the way that it did, I mean, I wouldn't be here today. That's, that's a reality, so. Yeah, and there were things in that movie that Adam was saying were painfully realistic, like the way that they write it and all kinds of just really gory stuff. And I slept through a lot of the movie because, well, first of all, I slept through everything nowadays, but second of all, it was really yeah. hard for me to watch because those are all of our biggest fears on the outside kind of coming to light and playing before my eyes and even there was one point where you covered my eyes <laughs> yeah because I mean here's a spoiler alert so yeah I didn't want to see it I didn't need to see it and if you plan to watch a movie and you don't want me to ruin the end stop watching now but he wound up going back because he could not reassimilate back to life on the outside no no it's not why he went back it wasn't that he couldn't reassimilate. Why did he go back? I missed. I slept through a lot of it. Yeah. I woke up at the end where you covered he, my eyes. He went back because that was the only way. He went back to take that guy out. He planned all of that to get back in there because of that network and his family was in jeopardy. The guy was coming for his wife and his yeah, son. Yeah, like that's who what they were holding over him. His left family. him. They left him. Yep years prior because he did the typical, I mean, what so many of strong prison wives and family members have to experience, but he was like, go live your life. I can't hold you to this for this many years. I don't know, how common would you say that that, that is, that somebody who is living pretty straight and narrow is the wrong word, obviously, they wound up in prison, but not like clipped up or anything like that on the outside, but gets himself in a situation and then goes inside and just gets really gets caught up. That deep? Yeah. There's enough. Brandon. Well, yeah, Brandon's not a good example. There are plenty of guys 
that because of their intelligence, here's the thing, if you're intelligent enough and charismatic enough, right, whether you choose to click up and join those organizations, whatever it is you, you sign up for, or if you get forced into it, you come to the realization at some point that it's better to be the one leading sure. than simply allowing someone else who, you know, you'd rather be in charge than... Especially if you're smart enough to uh -huh. but watch you also the chess game. But you also have to understand that, you know, even though you're in charge, all of those under you will turn on you if you go against certain... Code? Certain codes and core beliefs, yeah. Hmm. Even one part in the very beginning when he first got to prison, the, the guy in the movie, it was within a matter of days that this guy had his hand and stuff. And I said to Adam, I was like, does it really happen that fast? And you were like, yeah. Somebody like him, yeah, you'd see him come in and immediately somebody's going to have their claws in. Because they think he has money? It's part of it. Especially in this day and age, you can get information on anybody. That's not difficult, you know, to find out why someone's there or even know about the person before they get there. You know, whether they have money or, I mean, people have all different uses depending on, you know, who it is that's seeking to get their hooks on them. Yeah. It's an unfortunate reality. Yeah. Prison definitely can create predators. Sure. Some people feel that they've got nothing else to lose. Some people feel like that's just what that environment dictates. You know, there's all sorts of different beliefs around that. So it's a very unnatural environment to put someone into. I mean, it's, that's why the system has got to change. We have to do better. I feel like this turned into the most depressing video. It is. It's extremely what depressing. What just happened? That's why I don't like to talk we about started laugh. We started off with a laugh and funny story, and it just went downhill fast. Well.